Good morning. It's Monday, November 13th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Hope Anew, and our scripture is Psalm 78, where Asaph writes, So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. Then they will not be like their ancestors, stubborn, rebellious, and unfaithful, refusing to give their hearts to God. Asaph, the writer of this psalm, makes a very compelling point of caution for each new generation in humankind to set its hope anew on God so we don't forget about his great power and what he's done and how we must not be stubborn about it. If there's one consistent and nearly inviolate reality about the human family, it's the tendency towards promising fidelity lightly and then breaking promises in favor of a supposed better way. Israel's history is a microcosmic rule of thumb for humanity's proclivity to agree with God today and discard their allegiance when the road gets a little bumpy. From Asaph, fast forward to Russell's generation, raised in the 1950s and 60s. Yes, we're talking about the hippie era. Free love, LSD, marijuana, or alcohol, your drug of choice. But everybody joins the march against Vietnam involvement. Yes, that generation. We were going to be different than our parents' generation. Everything was going to be different and much better than the old folks. Music changed from swing to rock. Clothing was unimportant, and we drove VW vans, not Cadillacs. But the truth is, we were just making Asaph's point. Every new generation has its own style, but the root of Adam's nature, rebellion against authority, puts us on a collision course with our Creator's authority. Our arrogant stubbornness separates us like night and day from God's love and care. As the cartoon character Pogo once said, we have met the enemy, and he is us. Opposite the viewpoint of the new generation is the head-shaking disapproval of the old generation. My parents didn't like my music, and frankly, I'm not too thrilled with the stuff I hear and see in the current generation's entertainment. And this makes Asaph's point as well. It isn't the style of any generation that matters. I can say that unreservedly because you won't find style police in scripture. What matters is not a generation's style, but whether they will set their hope anew in God. This brings a scriptural focus to the so-called worship wars down through the generations. There's enough criticism to fill the universe with nausea about how people worship. That's how people worship. The list includes music style, traditional style, contemporary style, blended style, liturgical versus freestyle, foggy or edgy style, robes or skinny jeans, somber or giddy, silent or bedlam, pre-tribulation rapturist or anti-rapturist. Most everything that creates an argument is a tempest in a teapot about style. And there's a verse in John's Gospel that tells us exactly what God thinks about all of that. John chapter 11, verse 35, Jesus wept. For you today, a prayer for those with whom you see wide gaps of difference is to ask God to let the scales of criticism drop from your own eyes and help you ignore the style of that next or former generation and pray for them to see their magnificent opportunity and blessing which they have to place their hope anew in God's love and care. Much better to pray for someone's blessing than against their style. Eat you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.